Europe and spent his time as cardiologist, interventional cardiologist also in the UK. And his current position is now is a consultant cardiologist and interventional cardiologist in National University Health Center, National University Hospital Singapore. Please welcome Dr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be part of this uh, ANCP Lifestyle Symposium. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, again, I'd like to express my sincere uh, gratefulness to the courtesy and uh, uh, hospitality uh, just uh, you know, extended to me, just like what uh, Dr. Bass was saying. And more importantly, uh, gave me the opportunity to meet Dr. Bassus for the first time in my life. <laughs> um, without further ado, I shall move on. And uh, being an interventionist, just like Dr. Rasmus, I did have reservation to show this slide as my first slide, but I think we have to face the truth and echoing what Dr. Rasmus is saying. Uh, a substantial proportion of patients continue to uh, experience symptoms uh, in the form of uh, refractory angina despite conventional revascularizations. And uh, the prevalence of angina actually increased substantially if they also have uh, comorbidities such as uh, uh, diabetes. Um, this patient suffered from uh, disabling uh, symptoms despite uh, conditions of uh, optimal medical therapy uh, with conventional revascularizations in the form of either coronary angioplasty or bypass operations or even both and uh, continue to have uh, severe myocardial ischemia. And in fact, I think there's a substantial, uh, it's possible that there's a substantial amount of patients out there experiencing refractory angina. And this is the estimated that between 5 to 10 percent of patients with angina will have refractory angina and uh, perhaps uh, approximately 10 percent of the patients with the coronary angiogram will eventually develop refractory angina. Uh, these are the numbers from uh, the Western world. Perhaps the uh, number in the United States will be more accurate based on uh, Dr. Barnes' uh, slide and not this one. Uh, it's difficult to uh, get the data uh, from this part of the world because uh, there's a lack of comprehensive data available. But uh, based on the uh, extrapolated data, for example, in Indonesia, it is estimated that perhaps 5 or 6 million people have in China. And uh, that makes approximately uh, a quarter to half a million people are uh, actually experiencing refractory in China as we speak this, at this time in, in time and at this point in time. And uh, the consensus that the uh, uh, number is increasing worldwide. And personally, I agree with uh, Dr. Tanners that uh, the needs of these patients are not uh, that well addressed. And uh, there's truly no real consensus in terms of what is the best uh, treatment strategy uh, for these patients. And in terms of all available uh, treatment modality, perhaps the ECP is the most consistent in terms of uh, its recommendations by major guidelines in the treatment of refractory angina. And in fact, uh, the European Society of Cardiology upgraded its recommendations from uh, to class 2B to class 2A back in 2013. Uh, this is perhaps the uh, first evidence that perhaps external counterpulsations may be useful in patients with angina. And uh, 21 patients were treated with this rather rudimentary uh, hydraulic system back in the 70s. They received five days of treatment only. And uh, amazingly, uh, the majority of patients were free of angina by day four. And the improvement of symptoms appears to be sustained for up to one month. And of this, uh, of the 11 patients who came back for repeat coronary angiography, about uh, four to six weeks later, uh, five of them showed an increase in vascularity based on the angiography assessment. And this was the uh, first uh, publication perhaps based on the EECP system that we are more familiar with, uh, similar to what we use these days. And believe it or not, the uh, machine was actually imported to US uh, from China. And at that stage, I think uh, Dr. Lawson 
in the collaborations with Dr. Saunders and uh, Sorov and also Dr. Uh, Peter Kwon at that stage, uh, found that they could reproduce the result similar to the Chinese counterpart and therefore started this pilot study. Uh, 18 patients with, with stable angina were treated with a full cost of EECP treatment and importantly, the vast majority of these patients uh, were symptom free uh, by the end of the treatment. They have an increase in exercise tolerance with no change in double product, suggesting that there is an improve in uh, myocardial perfusions. And this is just a schematic drawing uh, representing the trial finding. Uh, 17 uh, patients with men, one woman patients, all of whom had abnormal myocardial perfusions scanned at baseline and early after the EECP treatment, 14 of these patients had normal or improved myocardial perfusions. And follow this patient on for three years, uh, eight out of the 14 patients continue to have improved myocardial perfusion, suggesting that the potential benefit of EECP may be sustained for up to three years. And this is perhaps the most important and pivotal uh, randomized study uh, in EECP with regards to uh, uh, stable coronary and stable angina patients. And uh, seven centers uh, were involved, and all were from uh, the state. 139 patients were randomized, and 67 of the patients were randomized to receive check placebo, such that the cuff pressure of the EECP were equated to 75 millimeter mercury at a level whereby it was uh, known to have no central hemodynamic effect. The, the other 72 patients received active EECP treatment. And the main outcomes measures were changes in exercise durations and also time to one minute ST second depressions, as well as the changes in the uh, frequency of angina and also GTN use. And I must, these are the uh, baseline practice of the patients. And I must point out that these are a group of patients with stable angina, the severity of coronary disease, as well as symptoms, uh, not as uh, bad as what we would otherwise seen in patients with refractory angina. And it was found that numerically there was a significant, uh, numerically there was a, the extent of uh, improvement in the uh, exercise duration were greater in patients who received active EECP. And uh, however, in terms of uh, time to ST second depressions, there was statically significant improvement only in the patient who received uh, active EECP treatment. There was also a statistically significant reductions in the uh, daily angina count only in patients who received active treatment and if you look, only look at those patients who completed the full course of EECP treatment the extent of reductions was more pronounced and up to 50% reductions in the control in, in terms of uh, daily angina count. Um, there was no major adverse cardiovascular event meaning that the treatment was fairly safe and uh, most treatment-related adverse uh, events were mainly limited to skin or muscular skeletal problems. And of the uh, 71 patients who returned for one year follow-up, although the uh, quality of life and uh, uh, functioning state improved uh, immediately after the course of EECP, but the extent of improvement was, uh, was more pronounced at one year follow up, especially in the form of bodily pain, which may include angina, social functioning, and also cardiac specific health and functioning. And the uh, finding in the randomized control trial is actually reproducible in the actual real world clinical setting. Uh, this, is, uh, the, this was data from the ECP Clinics of Consortium, which was actually set up in 1995, only in the US. A, and uh, of the uh, early outcome data of 2,289 patients, we found that a substantial amount of patients actually uh, experienced an improvement in angina control uh, gauged by uh, improvement in CCS functional class. Now, international EECP registry perhaps uh, uh, sort of like uh, provide the most uh, wealth of data uh, to guide clinical practice in terms of short-term or long-term outcome data. And I think Dr. Barnas play uh, an important role, but has played an important role in, in the setup of this registry. It was initiated in 1998, uh, many USA centers, but there were nine or ten 
the non-USA center took part in it. Uh, the first phase actually enrolled 5,000 patients. The second phase enrolled a further 2,500 patients. And my understanding is that the second phase collected more data with regards to uh, heart failure. And uh, to minimize bias uh, and to reflect real world clinical practice, consecutive patients in participating center were enrolled even if they only received one session of treatment. And the early report from uh, IEPR, again, uh, consistent with what uh, was found in the uh, Master ECP as well as the ECP Clinical Consortium. In 978 patients, they found that a substantial amount of patients experienced a reduction in angina class uh, soon after the ECP treatment. Um, one of the most important objectives of IEPR is to uh, collect long-term outcome data over the course of three years. And uh, for these uh, purposes, uh, 1,427 consecutive patients in 108 participating centers were included in the final analysis. Uh, I must point out that these are a group of patients sicker than must be ECP. They have longer durations of uh, chronic disease. Uh, they have more extensive disease. And many of them, we're talking about uh, uh, more than 80% of these patients had a prior revascularization, either PCI or coronary artery bypass uh, surgery. But more importantly, close to 90% of these patients were considered no longer suitable for a further revascularization therapy. And uh, they do have, they did have a fairly bad angina in terms of CC class, CCS class 3 and 4 uh, functional state. The treatment was fairly safe. Uh, major adverse cardiovascular event was not much. Uh, there were some patients uh, actually had decompensated heart failure and unstable angina, but otherwise the vast majority were due to musculoskeletal and skin issues. Um, similar to, sorry, similar to earlier experience, uh, a large proportion of patients had an improvement in angina class uh, by the end of the treatment, and this was sustained at three years. And uh, looking at a group of patients who did not have any major adverse cardiac uh, event, the pattern of improvement or sustained improvement appears to be the same, suggests that perhaps the uh, observed treatment outcome is not due to uh, or is not confounded by an event or treatment such as angioplasty or coronary artery bypass graft. And this perhaps re reflects the true treatment effect of EECP in the long term. And in this uh, registry, we also found that there was a sustained reduction in weekly angina count and as well as uh, anti-angina medication use up to three years period. Um, the quality of life, the improvement in quality of life was also sustained for more than for, for three years. Um, the uh, major, I must say the major cardiovascular event uh, were high, but this is probably a reflection of uh, the fact that this is actually a group of uh, very sick patients. And uh, you have seen Dr. Barnes uh, 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 study in the uh, patients population in Mayo Clinic. They, did have a very high uh, mortality rate when you follow up and long term. So in, 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 essence, in, in essence, it's like there are actually quite a lot of uh, uh, observational or randomized study out there, uh, mostly single center experience. And nevertheless, uh, most of them, uh, most of the findings are consistent with the experience from mass ECP or NPR or EECP consulting. And many of these studies uh, some of which have been uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Bassner as well, have for objective functional testing in the form of exercise tests, blood tests, or even functional imaging. <laughs> um, just when I was working in UK, our experience in UK were pretty much similar to what was observed in IEPR. Um, just for example, really, it's like a, a majority of the patients, 70 or 80 percent of patients, experience a reduction in CCS class immediately after the ECP treatment, and uh, you can see that that was sustained for more than one year. That's what also what was also interesting to see is that the extent of improvement in exercise treadmill tests 
or exercise uh, durations was actually greater at six, three to six months follow up compared to immediately after the ECP, and suggesting that the beneficial mechanism may continue to actually work uh, even after the treatment has completed for the next three, three, three to six months and what may have maybe plateau off later on but we don't have any data to actually support that uh, uh, so, uh, what we call uh, uh, hypothesis and this is just to show that our immediate data and two years outcome data were pretty consistent with what uh, is observed in the uh, IEPR as well. And again, consistent, uh, what confirming the sort of consistency and the reproducibility of uh, treatment effect of EECP. And just a bit of more sort of objective uh, uh, evidence in terms of uh, EECP treatment from a clinical point of view. Uh, I'll show you some data on myocardial perfusion uh, imaging as a mean to assess the treatment effect of EECP. And this is perhaps the largest uh, uh, study using myocardial perfusion imaging. And seven international were involved in the study, including National Heart Center in Jakarta and uh, 175 patient, contact patients in participant center with Steven and China uh, were included in this study. Four patients from four centers had the same level exercise treadmill myocardial perfusion scan. And uh, in three other centers, the patient had maximum exercise myocardial perfusion scan. Uh, these patients were assessed between three to six months after the course of the ECP treatment. And uh, over 80% of the patients who performed same level exercise treadmill test had an improvement in uh, their myocardial perfusion scan. And uh, with low, they, they achieved that with low, lower level uh, products, exercise double products, suggesting that there may be a decrease in oxygen demand or myocardial oxygen demand in this case. Um, over 50% of the patients who did maximum level uh, exercise treadmill myocardial perfusion scan had an improvement in their myocardial perfusions. They also had an improvement of exercise durations by almost one minute without any change in double product, perhaps suggesting that there is an improvement in myocardial perfusions. This is a study I uh, did when I was uh, training in the UK in a group of patients with uh, heart failure uh, with uh, injection fraction less than 40%. Uh, six patients were randomized to five minutes active EECP treatment. Uh, the other eight patients randomized to receive the full one hour EECP treatment and they were assessed using the Danielson stress cardiac MI at baseline post ECP and six months later. And we observed that the number of viable but ischemic myocardial segment actually decreased in those who received uh, active EECP treatment. But the, uh, in the, the reductions was only uh, apparent at six months but not immediately after EECP. Likewise, the improvement in first pass reserve index or myocardial perfusions also increased in those, only in those who received active EECP treatment and the real increase happens between end of treatment, the period end between end of treatment and, uh, and six months follow up. And there are many, there, there have been many studies actually assessing uh, uh, the outcome of EECP treatment based on myocardial perfusion scan, such as using myocardial perfusion scan, uh, PET scan, uh, stress echo, and some even use uh, to the level that there was some invasive Doppler measurement as well, but that's more acute hemodynamic study rather than a, a, a chronic effect of EECP. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, it's like that EECP is safe and a non-invasive treatment. It is effective in improving angina control in the majority of the patients, and the beneficial effects may actually be sustained for up to three years. Um, the data, I think, is that they are available in patients in both chronic angina, but perhaps more so in refractory angina, and many have been substantiated by an objective assessment. But I do agree with uh, many of my colleagues who I've spoken to before the, this symposium that we need a uh, you know, there's still room for a larger randomized control trial in this aspect. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Mark. I would like to invite both speakers who will sit in the States because we have a discussion here. And I would like to invite 
uh, participant for a uh, discussion and probably you have questions uh, for both speakers. Uh, please raise uh, raise uh, your hand and identify yourself. Uh, one, think, uh, we have first uh, two speak two questions from the first question. Thank you. I am Diana from Surabaya. Uh, my question is addressed to the speaker. Uh, as we know, uh, ECP claim equal to the exercise. Uh, what if what if there is a patient who is doing ECP but also want to exercise on the same day? Uh, is there any specific regulation on on this subject? Or, or she or he should postpone the exercise? Or, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you for that excellent question. It's a very good question. It comes up a lot. Some of the patients uh, are motivated to exercise. In fact, most of them are motivated to exercise and would like to do that. And they, there tends to be a conflict between whether they should continue to exercise or whether they should stop during ECP. In my experience, and there are no written guidelines about this, but in my experience, it's safe to exercise on the same day. Uh, generally, people at the beginning of the ECP, because it's like starting an exercise program, they are sometimes tired. There's it's an active day. There's new things for them, so it can be challenging for these first couple of days of treatment to also add exercise in in a formal way. But certainly, it's not uh, a bad thing to be exercising on the same day. And in fact, at uh, the by mid course of treatment, we actively encourage our patients to exercise on the same day of therapy uh, to kind of promote some continued good health and get them in the habit of exercising so that when ECP is done, which is kind of a jump start for exercising on their own, when ECP the course is finished, then they can go on and exercise on their own and feel confident to do that, uh, even in the absence of ECP. So, very good question. Thank you. Yes, I think uh, if the patient is motivated, I think they should be encouraged to do that. Uh, how that does not push themselves too hard. Um, importantly, I think uh, this is based on real good experience that uh, these patients actually do take a lot of uh, big control medications. So if they do go through uh, exercise class or anything along that line, just make sure that they tell their trainer that their amount of exercise should, should not be judged by heart rate. And I did have patients who actually went to exercise and did push to achieve certain heart rate and ended up they had more harm than good. I uh, think exercise is a good thing in terms of uh, you know, rehabilitation, rehabilitation for all any heart conditions and had perhaps one of the strongest non-medical interventional data in terms of uh, improved long-term outcome. Thank you. And uh, the second question is from the front. Yes, um, my question is regarding the uh, physiology of the uh, uh, ECP. Uh, I think uh, Related to the uh, first question, is that uh, uh, routine exercise maybe uh, have a relation with the develop developing of the uh, collateral or also angiogenesis in the uh, coronary arteries. So, uh, is there any any evidence uh, to the law and also to, to track uh, in, in the study that it's showing that uh, this ECP, the result ECP, also related to the uh, angiogenesis or also uh, developing a new collateral in the brain actually. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so again, a very good question about neoangiogenesis. So certainly the platform for development of new blood vessels, collaterogenesis or neovascularization, involves shear forces and ischemic substrate. So there's ischemia, the body tries to heal that, Cytogenesis and endogenesis, uh, and the shear forces would know that. So, whereas ECP improves shear forces, theoretically, it could improve neoendogenesis. It's a little bit difficult to show that. Dr. Lowe has uh, mentioned some studies that have shown some potential modulation uh, with improved uh, perfusion. It's difficult to show on a, on a uh, individual uh, 
basis, but certainly there's reason to believe that that's part of it. I think that uh, uh, you know endothelial function improvement is probably the more direct mechanism for benefit here, and it may be over time that you uh, know but the substrate is there and it's possible. Okay, before we go to the second uh, multi people question, I'd like to ask you how many of you uh, work with PECP? Uh, you can raise your hand or as experience uh, treating patients, your patients with PECP. How many of you work with PECP? Please raise up your hand. For having experience, uh, your patients uh, treated with PECP. Uh, probably Dr. Marco, please, who has uh, uh, experience with ECP, can uh, share your experience. Okay. Can I have to do Well, uh, Dr. Barnes and Dr. Ro, this is uh, our experience in National Health Center in the beginning periods of ECP. You are not mistaken, at, uh, at that time, only one center in New York uh, of ECP during the 85 to until the 90. And this data shows us uh, about 33 years follow up. Uh, the upper curve, you see the coronary artery disease without any intervention, only medical therapy, and the bottom of the green line, green curve, is uh, ECP, CAD with ECP, uh, 26 times, and then maintains uh, twice a month, and you see the, the survival is the difference. This is not a randomized study, only a comparable uh, survival, among the two groups, and I believe in, in the future of the current uh, published uh, data is also like this. So I <laughs> would like to have your comment. You see, uh, from 315 patient total, and from the arm of ECP, the number of events only 5% within the three years. It's about maybe less than two percent per year, and the the uh, medical treatment is higher uh, even in terms of cardiac uh, death and MI, only forty uh, percent, forty percent. So I think three times double. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> we'd like to have a comment on this uh, information. Is this uh, reliable <laughs> to? Get yeah, the conclusion. Um, thank you very much for opening it to our questions. I, uh, I certainly never came across these things, and I'm interested to thank you. Um, the fact that it's not a randomized study may be quite different because the baseline characteristic may be different in two groups, and maybe the reason why group patients who don't think their baseline characteristic uh, are the same, but for some reason, you know, like uh, gut feeling and physicians' uh, decisions to put patients on certain treatment may have solved that substantially symmetric. Like the low risk, low risk patients to actually go for ECP treatment and therefore they have better outcome in the long run. The patient may actually self select themselves um, because they are very very interested of whether they, they have to pay for the treatment or not. And maybe they have they are, you know, in better health, uh, financially more, uh, how should you say, uh, more able and also more health conscious. And that put them in a better sort of long term outcome anyway, uh, whether they have any treatment uh, compared to your know, like lower social economic class patients. Um, I think it would be speculative to see you know, whether it's EP uh, compared to medical therapy in a randomized study or provide a hard clinical outcome endpoint. Uh, depending on the patient's uh, uh, population, I suppose, uh, I think if you have only stable and general patients, we know the, uh, the the event rate is low for these patients. I mean, the Irish study and the syntax study have to report a big number of patients in order to see any statistically uh, meaningful outcome difference. 
so I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the master is at the books of the. Well, well, congratulations on the, on the follow up. Very, this is a central component of what we need to do. We need to get data, establish it in different regions, and 